Hi, my name is Paul, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about online student engagement. And this is a short lecture for the B31NC course at Bakersfield College. Okay, here's my agenda for this lecture. First, I want to talk about some barriers to engagement, and I've got some information by Stephen Thomas for this. Then I'm going to talk about uh, John Spencer's opinion on whether engagement is actually the real issue or not. And lastly, Suki Rudra has some suggestions for increasing online engagement. So first, barriers to engagement. The first thing that you probably want to consider if you're uh, thinking that maybe you don't have good online engagement with your students is maybe these five issues are relevant for you. First of all, if the content doesn't relate to the student's real life experiences, then they have a hard time relating it. Second is when instructors ignore variations in online learning styles, that can lead to some problems. And I know for me personally, I, I have my preferred methods of teaching, but those methods aren't always the, the best methods for all my students. So I have to consider whether I have enough diversity in how I present my topic. Third is declining confidence. Students are having a, a tough time, as everyone is these days, but there's a lot of students that just are not as confident as they maybe used to be, and you have to consider that. Uh, fourth are the external influences. There are many different things affecting people's lives these days, and you really don't know what kind of external influences might be in place, but you have to be aware that they are likely out there and they're causing some kinds of disruption. And lastly, online learning is new to most people. And with anything new, it takes a while to, to get into the new system. So those are the barriers to online engagement. Now let's take a look at maybe the, the real issue. And one suggestion by John Spencer is that it's not engagement, but it's empowerment. The students need to be empowered to, to have some control over the direction of their learning experience. Uh, it's especially true when, for the most part, they're on their own in this learning experience. You might have lectures with them and you might have videos for them, but they don't really have that personal interaction. So they need some sort of empowerment. They need to feel that they're in control of their destiny. And continuing Spencer's suggestion, there should be some self-direction component in your courses. Um, it's, it's very helpful when you have students of different learning abilities you can let the uh, more advanced ones go a little faster or, or a little deeper. And ones that are struggling a bit, you can uh, have a, a maybe an easier or simpler or more direct path for them. And lastly, Suki has some suggestions on how to increase engagement. First is a clear course structure and way to navigate in that structure. So the students need to be able to understand what you are and what you're going to present throughout the course. So there needs to be a, a good, easy, logical navigation to your course. Second is you need some personal touch. You need to uh, uh, show your human side when you're talking and relating to your students. And last is you need to get feedback from your students and most importantly is you need to take action on that feedback. You might not necessarily agree with the kinds of feedback that you get, but if you ask for feedback and you do nothing with it, then they're not going to give you more feedback in the future. So get feedback and take action on that feedback. Show them that you're listening and, and you're trying to make it better for them as they go. So thanks for engaging, and if you're interested, here are the references for the 
the three sources that I cited in this short lecture. Okay, again, my name is Paul, and see you online. Thanks.